Greetings, PBC family. Wow, these last few weeks have been pretty crazy, huh? With all this coronavirus pandemic stuff going around. Every one of us has been impacted in some way, shape, or form. And I want to let you know, I really miss being with our church family in person and meeting with so many of you on a Sunday or a midweek uh, ministry event. And I just want to let you know, I always leave refreshed and encouraged in my walk with the Lord when I'm around God's people. So as we're still in the midst of the safer at home orders issued by the government and we're not able to meet physically in person, I wanted to give you a brief word of encouragement from God's word about what it tells us to do in order to have healthy relationships. With the majority of adults working from home and students during their schooling online at home, we are around each other a lot longer and closer quarters than we're normally used to being. I keep seeing in the news that there's been a significant increase in relational conflicts in the home, and in general, people are starting to get a lot more irritable with each other. Unfortunately, that does not surprise me. When you have multiple sinners being in the same home for 24 hours each day, it's no surprise that issues are going to arise that challenge our relationships with each other. If we do not actively pursue and meditate on what God's word tells us to do to, in order to have rich and deep and satisfying and God glorifying relationships, we're going to notice that our flesh is going to become a lot more prevalent, such as we get easily annoyed with each other, saying unkind and hurtful words, raising our voices in anger at our children and spouses that we normally wouldn't do. We get impatient a lot more quickly and so forth. Well, fortunately, God's word is filled with so many principles for us to have great relationships. And I want to share with you some of my uh, favorite passages that deal with this subject. And it's real key, knowing is one thing, but we have to be doers of the word and just not hearers. So if we put these into practice, we're going to reap the blessings of it. Colossians 3, 12 through 15 states, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Those are really powerful words. Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. Why? As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called into one body, and be thankful. Proverbs 19.11 Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. Proverbs 17, 9, whoever covers an offense seeks love. And one of the greatest ways that we can show Christ to those around us is by showing love and willing to overlook an offense and be wronged and not, and not make a big deal out of it. <clears throat> Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Ephesians 4.29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only as such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Does that represent our speech to others in our homes? <clears throat> Luke 6.35-36, for God is kind to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful even as your father is merciful. If God could be, un be kind to those that are ungrateful and evil, and he can be merciful to them, so can we. 1 Peter 4, eight. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. And then finally, we'll wrap it up with Ephesians 4.32. It says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Why? As God in Christ forgave you. So some of the key themes of these verses are that we need to have an abundance of forgiveness, mercy, and love towards others. When we're so overwhelmed by the gospel that we were forgiven an unpayable debt toward God that we did nothing to deserve, it makes it much easier for us to have a forgiving and kind spirit toward others, especially when we've been wronged. We should be actively looking for ways to love and serve our family during this time, such as helping out with the chores around the home, doing projects that your spouse has been wanting you to do for months or years, but you just put off because you just never had the time to get to it. Doing an activity that another person in your home enjoys that maybe you do not as much. Again, this is putting others before us, being kind, showing love, courtesy, compassion towards others, as those Bible verses encourage us to do. We should be careful in our speech to ensure that's kind and gracious, as Ephesians 4 tells us. 
We should use words that build the other person up instead of tearing down. And when someone says or does something hurtful to you, remember how Christ has forgiven us for much worse. Well, that's all I have time to, for today to share with you, but I hope these words were a great encouragement to you as they were to me. And I look forward to Lord willing seeing all of you shortly. God bless.